I have this motion sensor switch in my office. When I walk in, the lights turn on, and after I leave, they turn out after a few minutes. But here's the problem. If I'm in the office but not moving around, the lights just turn off. I feel kind of dumb waving my arms around to turn on the lights all day long. And what about the times I want to keep the lights on even when I'm not in my office? Now, a sane person would see this problem and pop in one of these, a $1 light switch. You switch it on, and the lights stay on. You switch it off, and they stay off. But I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to install this smart switch, and then I'm going to install a separate motion sensor and program my lights to do exactly what I want with a Raspberry Pi running Home Assistant. What's Home Assistant? And how can a Raspberry Pi turn on my office lights? Well, I'll get to that. The kind folks at Nabucasa sent me this, their new Home Assistant Yellow. It's a Raspberry Pi powered smart home hub with built-in Zigbee and a bunch of other features that make it easy to manage your smart devices. And the best thing? All of it is under my control. And I can make sure that my so-called smart devices don't get too smart and open up security holes to my house through the internet. But first, let's talk about the yellow. The yellow was originally called Amber, and it was crowdfunded in October last year and starts shipping soon. It's sold by Nabu Casa, the open source company that manages the Home Assistant and ESP Home projects. Home Assistant is the most popular home automation software that lets you manage all kinds of smart devices and integrates with everything from smart outlets and light bulbs to garage door openers, solar panels, and even weather vanes. But the best thing about it? It gives you control of your own home. A lot of vendors require you to install a device that connects to their own cloud over the internet. I don't know about you, but I don't like relying on random Internet of Things companies to manage the security and safety of my house and store my data. I'd rather not wake up as a popsicle this winter because my thermostat got hacked. But Home Assistant manages everything locally, inside your house. I'm not going to lie and say it's easier to set up than any other home automation system, but it is pretty easy. The yellow comes in this frosted case, though the one I have here is an early review sample, so it doesn't have a nice finish like the production units will have. Taking the board out, you can see how it's built. The model I have includes built-in power over Ethernet, so I could either plug it into the wall with an AC adapter or power it through my PoE switch. Under this large heatsink, there's a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4, the brains of the smart hub. One really cool feature of this hub is you can actually upgrade the Raspberry Pi inside and get more RAM or add on Wi Fi and Bluetooth, but you'll need to transfer your Home Assistant install to the new Pi if you do that. The board has a built in real time clock and battery, and over here is a little built in Zigbee radio, which lets you connect to all your smart devices wirelessly. And you could add on a Z Wave radio like the Z Pi 7 using these pins. For the purposes of this video, Zigbee and Z-Wave are basically the same thing, just two separate wireless standards used for smart devices. But the important thing to remember is Zigbee and Z-Wave devices aren't interchangeable. It's best to stick to one or the other if you can. I'll be using Zigbee in my house. Over on the side of the board, there are three LEDs, a red power LED, a green activity LED, and a yellow LED that lights up with different patterns to indicate the status of the Home Assistant hub itself. The last major feature on this board is this M.2 expansion slot. You can pop in an NVMe SSD in it for more and faster storage, and you could even configure the yellow to boot from the NVMe drive if you use a light version of the Raspberry Pi. All right, so the first step on my automation journey is replacing this light switch. I'm going to put in this Leviton single pole Zigbee switch, and because I'm going to turn out the lights in my office, I need a work light so I can see what I'm doing. It should be obvious, but even if you're a bit insane like Redshirt Jeff, make sure you switch off the branch circuit that powers your lights before you go replacing the light switch. And to be extra safe, verify the powers off of the switch with a little power tester like this one. Something I did years ago when I moved into my house was label every outlet and light switch cover with the circuit breaker number so I don't have to sit in my basement turning off half my house just to figure out the right breaker. This switch requires a neutral wire connection. Basic light switches only switch the hot leg, so if you have an older wiring setup in your house that doesn't have the neutral wire in your switch box, you might have to change out the wires to your lights if you want to use a smart switch. Luckily that's not the case here. And I do have a neutral in my box. 
So with that wired in, this switch should be good to go for some testing. Now I just have to switch power back on at the panel, then I should be able to use the switch as a dumb switch that just goes on and off right away. Okay, good. Now that that's working, I'll set up the motion sensor. The great thing about having a separate motion sensor is I can put it wherever it makes the most sense, which for me is in the middle of the office, since that should pick up movement when I'm at my desk behind the monitor. All right, that's done. So far, these things are all just dumb devices. We need to integrate them into Home Assistant so I can add some automation and intelligence. Otherwise, I'd feel pretty silly wasting a hundred bucks making a fancy $1 light switch. I already plugged in yellow, waited for it to boot, went to homeassistant.local and ran through the setup wizard. I created an account and set up my location and at the end of the setup process, yellow found a bunch of devices it could manage. But for now, I'm going to ignore all those devices and focus on setting up the smart switch and motion sensor. All right, so I'm going to open up my browser and here is Home Assistant's UI. Now, I have not used Home Assistant before, so this is all kind of new to me. And it looks like integrations or devices. Let's see, devices. Uh, there's no way to add one here, so I'm not going to do that. I'll go to integrations and this looks more like it. Uh, so here's the things it detected but it's not seeing the thing. So I'm gonna look for, uh, what is the company? I'm gonna look for Leviton first and see if there's anything for that. No, I guess I might need to add like Zigbee or something first. Cause I, I noticed there's nothing for Zigbee anywhere in here that I could find. Uh, so I'll try that, Zigbee, nothing. Uh, I'm gonna click this and see what happens. Let's see, Zigbee, ah, oh, there it is, Zigbee. I'll try one area. Uh, this hub, this hub, I guess, will be in the basement. So I'll add a new area and call it uh, basement. Hopefully this is going to work. Um, basement. Okay. All right. So I have Zigbee. It's called TTY AMA1. Maybe I can rename this. Uh, I don't know what this is all doing, but let's see devices. Zigbee coordinator add device. Let's see if we can do this. Oh, devices need to be in pairing mode. So it's actually been a few minutes. If, if you don't know about video editing, the magic here is that I will have cut out a lot of parts between when I was moving cameras and things. So I need to put these devices in pairing mode so that they will show up here. So I'm going to do that uh, right now. Okay, so I just pressed the button on the light switch. You just hold down the top of the paddle for seven seconds and then click it once and it started flashing uh, amber, and now it's flashing green. So I don't know what starting interview means, but I hope that's a good thing. It, oh, here we go. Device is ready to use. Okay, so device name, I'll call it office light switch. And the area uh, is in my office. So I'm gonna call it office, add office. Okay, now, I guess that's it. There's no save button or anything. I'm hoping that that means it's saved. Um, so the other thing is this motion sensor. I just grabbed it off the ceiling over there. And it says in its manual, there's a magic recessed connect button somewhere. This device is too smart for me. Let's see, it says open here. So let's see if that does something. Oh, there's a teeny tiny hole in here. You can't actually stick something in there, so let me go grab a tool to uh, press that button. I'm going to press the button. All right, so this is blinking. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, it says connected. Okay, configuring. This is good. While it's configuring, I'm going to go hang this back up on the ceiling. I don't know which way is up, but I don't think it matters too much on here. All right, Samjin Motion. I'm going to call this Office motion detector, put it into my office, and I hope that's done. All right, so it looks like those things are set up. Now the next step I need to do is set it up so that the motion detector is connected to the light switch. So I'm going to try to figure that out. Bear with me here. I'm going to configure automations maybe. Let's see, automations. I think I might need this. Automation. Uh, 
turn on lights when I enter office. Hmm? Great. No. I'm going to skip that and just try to do this. Uh, office lights motion detector. Something like that. I don't know what that is, but maybe later I'll figure that out. Triggers. Trigger ID. Oh boy. So here's where things start getting a little bit more complicated. Um, I don't know what a trigger ID is, but uh, hopefully the, the device will help me with this maybe. Let's see. Office motion detector. Okay, trigger. Started detecting motion, I think is what I want here. Uh, I don't know why it's giving me a duration. Maybe it's like how long it detects motion. Trigger ID. Uh, I don't know what that means. Um, I'm just going to call it motion detect. If it's an ID, I don't want to put in like a space or anything because as a programmer, I know that that can throw things off. But I don't know. I mean, so far things have worked pretty well in here. I haven't broken anything. I don't need a condition. Um, actually, I should add a condition that the light device light switch is off. Okay. So if the switch is off and motion is detected, light switch, turn on light switch. Okay. So I think that's what I need to do. So I'll click, click save here. I don't know if that saved or not. I hope it did. I guess I'll go back here. Okay, so this is there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my office lights and then walk into my office and see if they turn on. We'll see what happens here. Who knows if this is going to work. Alright, so I'm moving around and I'm well within range of this motion sensor and it's not doing anything. So I'm not too sure if I did something wrong or what's going on. I'm going to hit run actions and see what that does. Well, that turned on the light. <laughs> uh, let's see, history. Ooh, this doesn't look right, whatever this is. It looks kind of broken here. So I'm going to take a quick pause and figure out what's going on, and then I'll tell you what's going on once I've figured it out. Five minutes later. Wait a second. I just moved and the light turned on. <laughs> ah, so maybe it's just a matter of not waiting long enough. So another thing that's interesting is with my old switch, you could turn off the lights and about five seconds later it would start detecting you. So maybe it's just a timeout condition. So it's working. That's a good thing. Why it works, I'm not 100% sure yet. Okay, so I'm going to create a new one. Add automation. Motion. Oh, look at this. There's a blueprint for this. Of course, after I spend 10 minutes working on my own custom automation. Uh, so I'll call this uh, office lights turn off motion when office unoccupied. Something like that. Uh, so motion activated light, motion sensor, that one. I don't know why it doesn't use my the name that I put in for it. I didn't call it Samjin Motion. Um, light, pick area, I'll just do office for the area. Wait time to leave on. Oh, so this is interesting. Oh, so this blueprint is actually really useful. It does the extra step for me of it'll turn on the light and leave it on for a set amount of time. So I could set this to, I love how it's just in seconds, like as if everybody knows that 86,400 seconds is a day. So 20 times 60 would be 1200. Okay, so we'll do 1200 seconds, and I'll say office lights, motion detect. Yeah, save that. Okay, so I saved it. it that's an interesting thing. It doesn't show me that it saved it. Um, so I'm just assuming that it saved because that save button went away. It's an interesting convention. Okay, so I'm going to delete this one. Uh, how do I delete? Edit? No. How do I delete an automation? Delete automation. There we go. 
take that one out. Okay, so we have motion detect, and actually for now, I'm gonna change this just so I can see if it's working. I'm gonna change it to, let's do 30 seconds. Now I'm going to leave the office and we'll see if the lights turn out. So I'm gonna cut the video here because you don't need to wait 60 seconds for me. Great, it seems to have worked perfectly. And this time it just motion detected right away. So um, happy with that. It looks like this action is working really well. And if I click in here, I should probably also be able to see there's probably a way to see, yeah, edit in YAML. So this is like the actual stuff that's happening. And it looks like it's using a blueprint called motion light. So it'd be interesting to see what that is. I don't know how to get to that right now. Oh, blueprints maybe. Motion activated light. Uh, there's, is there a way to see what it says? No? No, maybe it's here. All right, so here's the motion activated light. So this is the blueprint for it. So what's what I think is cool about this that you don't get with a lot of other systems is you can see all of the magic behind the scenes and edit it that way. And as a programmer myself, I kind of like this, but I think it's nice that on the surface, it's kind of covered up for you. So I, I think it's kind of weird. I mean, like chat bots and things like that. When I go here and I see this as a, again, as a programmer, I'm like, oh, I know how hard these are to get right. And so 90% of what people will type in is not what you expect. Apparently I haven't been moving enough. There we go. Um, so anyway, I, I gotta switch that back from 60 seconds to something more. Um, but it, it, these are just so hard to do. I think what they should do, you know, and what I could help them do at some point too, if I wanted to contribute back to this is maybe put use a blueprint first because probably a lot of people that are just setting up this first time are probably gonna do like a motion activated light because that's like home automation 101. But uh, I don't know, I, th this kind of feature just doesn't, unless it's like almost perfect, it doesn't feel like something you'd wanna give to a new first time user because when you do this, it's a little weird. And it says we couldn't create an automation for that. And so, so then you get in here and you're like, okay, skip or create, you know, it, there's just a lot of steps here. Anyways, uh, so it looks like that works. I'm gonna switch this automation and set it to do uh, for 20 minutes, 1200 seconds, save. All right, so that's set to 20 minutes now. Um, but I, I think the, the overall thing that I found is Home Assistant's UI does have a learning curve. It's not too crazy. Uh, there's a lot of software that I've used that's a lot worse than this. Uh, but it, it isn't something that's quite as simple as some of the home home kit things that I've used on my iPhone where you just kind of open an app and tap on something and it works. There are a few more steps here, but the power and the flexibility that gives me is huge. Like the fact that I can go in and change every single detail, I could put this to minutes or hours, probably even days to uh, leave the lights on after motion's detected. That's, that's huge for me. <laughs> right after recording that bit, I realized that I can just, <laughs> on this uh, dashboard, tar turn on and off my office light like this. And I don't know why, but that's just, that's just really fun. I also just added this little button, which lets me turn off the office lights and disable motion detection from my desk so I can start getting more creative with video lighting. Also, I forgot to show how I moved Home Assistant's data disk to the NVMe drive I installed. The process takes a few minutes, but it worked fine. So far, there isn't a way to migrate back to the Pi's built-in storage, so if you choose to use an NVMe drive but change your mind, right now, the only way to do that is to back up and reset yellow, then restore from your backup. The yellow costs 115 bucks without a Pi, and that version should be available by the end of May. A full kit, including a Pi, will cost 175 bucks and optimistically could start shipping in November. But in terms of Pi Compute Module 4 availability, Right now, at least, Seed Studios has some in stock, and if you want one for yellow, you might want to get one now. They've been hard to get, but at least right now it's not impossible. Now, is yellow the only way to run Home Assistant? No, not at all. It can run on most any modern computer, or even other specialized hardware like this DINRAIL Pi from the Mega D2561 team in Russia, which I'll be testing soon. I'll also be integrating a lot more into Home Assistant. Subscribe so you don't miss any of it, and until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling.